Welcome to a special theme section, for I have planned a month of British politics. A month? Yes. I'm going to be tied to this chair for a month. Uh, and, as you may hear, uh, well, hopefully you can hear I have with me a genuine British person. Hello there. He shall help ensure that things are accurate and true to life. At least as best as I can. Hmm. Oh man, remember when you had to program consoles to make them run? No. It's a computer, I know. Right. In fairness, I always do that when we're chatting. Uh, mix up consoles and computers? Mix up what the C64 is. Ah, it's a computer, you fool! Isn't Amstrad CPC a computer as well? I'm pretty sure that's what the second C stands for as well, yes. Oh, right. Now... I believe this should... Nothing's loading up, and I'll turn on the emulator's turbo mode. Which sponges it up to 2000% speed. And then we run. That's a pretty handy tool to have. And skip the cracker intro. And this game is... Yes, Prime Minister. It's a surprising TV tie-in. Yes, and... It is actually quite a good tie-in. Also, I realized I did not check how the joystick settings are set. Hmm. Well, we'll find that soon. Hop, hop, hop. Hmm. Oh dear. Ah, oh, okay. Good, that didn't break anything. Oops. Well, that's good. Now, let's just start the game with our friend friendly Prime Minister Jim Hacker looking pensive in the corner. So let's go. It appears to be Monday. Yes. This game covers a week of politics. It's a very famous saying, and I forget who it's by, but a week is a very long time in politics. Hmm. So loading, but I'm rather hesitant to use the warp drive this time because the game then right ahead goes to. Well. So it pretty much drops straight into what it is, doesn't it? Yeah, and it has a sort of a. the running clock. So. Ah, there's that. Oh well, this shouldn't take too long. Imagine if we were we were running a tape a tape instead Boy. of a disc. Imagine when we thought nothing would ever surpass magnetic tape as a storage medium. Hmm, I don't remember oh. those days. I already had discs. <laughs> Luxury. Yes. We had the Commodore one. 128, which had an integral disk drive. It was a bit bizarre. I had a Commodore console, computer, that had a an attachment tape drive. Mm. And that seemed like a step backwards even then. Mm. Alright. Yeah. <clears throat> Just Mm, okay. Ah, 
here we go. Ah, come on. I will boop your nose. <laughs> and we have a memo on the desk. Which says we have a 1920 appointment with cabinet secretary. Who would be Sir Humphrey? And uh, well, look at that! It's a most timely LP as well. It's the beginning oh, of April. Yes, I didn't think of that. And we can dig through the drawers. Yes, there it is again. A week. I. Yes. Uh, was not aware they make reference manuals for prime ministers. You see, that I feel like something that would be in the hard copy manual. Uh, something like that. And this other drawer, we have the itinerary. Let's see. G E V G D. I have no idea what that stands for. Me neither. I imagine one of those G stands for general, something. But let's see. Well, as you can see, time is running here. And oh, there's one more thing we can buy here. Behind the union, behind the union check here is a safe, I presume. Uh, yeah, yeah, a safe. And here we can check our approval numbers. Ah, still better than Tony Blair. I think it's still better than most of our PMs, to be honest. Mm. You yeah. see, that's that's good because that joke will just last forever. Mm. Okay, well, I think we can de head out given that. It takes some time to travel between locations. No, wait, so Humphrey's office. And there it is, the man himself, Sir Humphrey. I do not remember his full name. I want to say something like Appleton. Maybe. Something Apple like that. May Appleby, maybe? Yes. Anyway. Shall we voice things? Yes, why not? Alright, who does who? Well, I suppose I could make a start since you're the one in, uh, you're the one at the controls. Alrighty. So then, ah, Prime Minister, do come in. I was just about to phone you about your idea of setting up a ministry for women's affairs. Blow me. It was my idea, wasn't it? I feel like there should be more to that line. Yeah? Oh, there is. There we go. Yes. And this is the core of the game, basically. You go through conversations about policy stuff. And then you make choices which... Well... Then... That really seems to be any... <laughs> any clearly good uh, right and wrong choices and it somehow affects your approval ratings which sounds like a fairly good uh, interpretation of politics it seems like a good version of the moral choice system <laughs> mm. better than black, plain black and white yeah also this at least i think this game has quite quite good good writing though none of the writers from the sh uh, series were involved, as far as I can tell. But, now, which should we choose? Do we care about radical feminists? Or traditional male followers? I think number one would probably be the better option. Well, let's try that. Are they ever pleased, Prime Minister? Depriving them of one of their favorite complaints would 
probably make them even more annoyed. Mm. And another thing, what sort of women do you want to appeal to? Hmm. Three options this time. Hmm. I think that number three would be... Let's say keeping consistent with the tone of the show. Oh. Uh, well, yeah, I can see that. Let's just... Do this thing to please the radical feminists and try to <laughs> shove it away from having any real influence. <laughs> uh, let's try this. Humphrey, you can't pigeonhole women like that. For the sake of convenience, let us accept your stereotypes. I suppose we should appeal to... Yes. Uh, is that entirely wise, Prime Minister? They do, of course, have... I think number two is... I think number two as well. Mm. Correct. Another point occurs to me, Prime Minister. If you do establish this ministry, will you appoint a man or a woman to be in charge of it? Well... Now, you see, logic would say number one. But I, I, th I think number one would at least keep it consistent again. Yeah, that's. Uh... But that's sexist, Prime Minister. Pure anti-male discrimination. Yeah, there doesn't really seem to be a good uh, answer for that. I, I mean, I can see a man getting the opposite response as well. Yeah, but that's, what's. I think that for that he just says, well, doesn't that rather defeat the whole point yeah. of... One more thing. Mightn't the new department encroach on the territory of other departments? Such as the Home Office, Department of Agriculture, which seems uh, rather tenuous. That's a stretch. Oh? Department of Employment, which sounds like the most reasonable thing to me. I would say so. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. There'd be quite a bit of creative tension, shall we call it, if you tried to create a new <coughs> department to do work which is being done by an old one. Hmm. On another hand, a new department would mean... Well, I'm fairly sure two is the right answer. Yes. Sir Humphrey is a civil servant. He seems to be concerned with keeping it going. Yeah, and uh, there was a bit, bit in the series where Sir Humphrey explained to this other character that, well, how do you, how do you measure the success of, of civil servants? Well, by how many you you, ha you have of them. Oh. Brilliant. Oh. Maybe it's not such a bad idea after all. Ah, so he, literally he is behind anything that incre gives gives work to most civil servants. Right, and that is that. Oh, let us see. What did that do? Nothing. Yeah, somehow you see the e effects right away in the polls. Oh, hello. This is new. Hmm. The BMA. Uh, do you have any idea what that is? The British Medical Association. Ah. Ah. Could be. Well, let's go say hello to Bernard. Something. Okay. Ooh. Ah. See, what have we here? Facts. It is the future. Yes. 
It appears to be dot matrix as well. Hmm. Road safety campaign. Ooh. And we are pleasing the police. Hooray. So, hmm. 12 to the lunch. With the United Breweries chairman, I'll just try. Um. Ah, what? Again? How oh, is this going to repeat? Maybe we're just really popular today. Ah. Ooh, honors list. Police again. But, but you just you just said that the police are are happy, so why would we need to improve morale even more? Well, I guess it doesn't hurt to keep them happy. Maybe Ooh. one is leading to the other. Ooh, a lamp. Oh, a phone. This phone. The grey phone. Let's keep it going. I voiced the Prime Minister and you do the other stuff. So far it's been rather heavy on your side, but I'm well, running this show, so... <laughs> well, that's okay. Prime Minister, the Home Secretary is on the line. It says it's urgent. Jim, Frank here. Sorry to phone you so soon after last night's do. Not too queasy, I hope. Anyway, there's bad news. But I don't want to tell you over the phone. It might be best if you came round to my room, where we could speak without interruption. Could you come round as soon as possible? Oh, um, okay, Frank. Oh, let's see. Uh, secretary. All right. Sorry to drag you around here. Apparently, on the way home from the do last night, our beloved trade secretary was stopped for drunken driving. I'm not sure if the news is out yet. This is urgent. We need to act fast. As far as I see, we can... Yes, I can see how this would clash with the road safety campaign. Absolutely. Mm -mm. So, do we cover up or kick him out? It seems a little morally dubious, but part one could also tie into the honors thing that we've got going on. Hmm, yes, that is possible. Oh, hmm. Well, shall we pick number one then? Let's go for number one. For goodness sake, keep your voice down, Jim. We don't mean cover-up. We mean a full and frank internal investigation all relevant facts would be examined without presupposition, and thus the consequent possibility that the conclusion may be reached that the evidence is lacking for successful prosecution. Sounds good to me. Absolutely. What does he really mean? A cover-up or not? Um... Well, that sounds like a cover-up to me. It sounds like a cover-up to me. <laughs> Okay, Jim, let's not quibble. We'll call it a cover-up. More to the point, would this cover-up be... Hmm... Possible... Oh, well, I don't think cover-ups are ever all that desirable, but... Oh, are they all... Ah, now I'm confused. There is a point, again in the show, where Sir Humphrey says that the government must not be seen to be doing bad things. They mm. can do bad things if people don't know. Uh, so, I imagine a possible but not desirable. Possible but not desirable. Mm. Well, it's certainly possible. Desirable too, don't you think? Well, fine then. Ah, well... There we go. As long as it's not discovered. Well, that goes without saying, Jim. Either a cover-up is possible, or it isn't. 
Ever heard of half a cover-up? Don't answer that. I've read The Sun, too. Especially on page three. Do you know they've changed that? Yes. Shall we explain that or leave people to look it up? Well, why don't you go ahead and explain that? You'll probably know more about it than me. We'll leave that one hanging out there. Um, in England, we have a tabloid called The Sun. And it used to be the case that on page three, there was a model who was at least topless. If not naked, but tastefully covered. And recently, there was a campaign to end that. It, it seems a rather backward sort of a thing. So back to this. How do we go about our cover-up? Yeah. And I just meant that you would know more about that than me on account of being <laughs> in the same country and being exposed to news about that stuff. Well, you know... I have no idea about your reading habits. I don't know how do we go about it. Mm. <laughs> Demoting him because dedication to duty. <laughs> Uh, that's a novel concept. Number three sounds like we should avoid number three. That That's the more morally dubious option. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's go for number one. Okay. Again, we can tie it into our honors. <sighs> Clever, neat, conclusive. Pity the world isn't like that too, Jim. Put it this way. How highly do you rate the idealism of young constables these days? Hmm, ooh, and here's another... Uh, more flexible uh, game mechanic. What do we say? It's a hackergram. Sliding scale of... Huh. Just realized. This... Is... Literally a sliding scale of idealism. <laughs> it is also a crosshair. Ah, so, well, what do you think? How idealistic are young constables these days? I'd like to think they are fairly high. Uh, I, I actually think so too. I mean, people in general tend to be idealistic when they're young and become more cynical. When, or I don't know if cynical but more compromising when they are older yes so maybe about here absolutely sounds good also this game is set in what is it the mid late 80s yes so it's it's a bit hard to gauge yeah but hey we hit it right on the spot exactly that is the problem they watch two episodes of Hill Street Blues. They think they can change the world. One whiff of a bribe in exchange for silence, and they resign like a shot. Probably sell the story, too. Besides, do we really have the power to promote and demote? Well, I imagine we do not directly, but, you know, we could suggest things and encourage actions by the police. Oh, what do uh, you think? As far as I know, like in, in a literal sense, the Home Secretary cannot promote and demote people. But I'm sure he can have words with friends of friends <laughs> to see that it happens. Hmm. So I would say he does have that power. No, oh, but... No. Well, okay. So, well, let's go with that. Huh? Not a bit of it. Purely police matter, I'm afraid. Mm. You've oh. led yourself up a blind alley with this one, Jim. Have a nice lunch with the chairman of United Breweries. Sorry, I must be off now. Ah, that's interesting. And I'm sorry to have cut you off. Uh, oh dear, numbers have gone down, but not much. Ah, on my test bit of test playing I actually had before I did you can you know go down the path of let's have that guy 
Oh dear. Antrip United Brewery Chairman. Uh, let's see if we still can reach. Wait. Well, see, that doesn't seem to be an option. Yeah. I love. Uh, maybe the lunch. Oh, maybe the lunch went by automatically and without a con player controlled conversation. It's possible. <laughs> well. Then meeting with the party chairman, I think if we press on the clock we can advance time. Yes. Right. The Prime Minister, sorry to get the week off to a bad start, but I gather there's been a spot of bother in a Soho restaurant. Bernard, I think he has the details. Huh. Well, let's see. Bernard, what is happening? Oh, sorry, Prime Minister. I wasn't expecting you. Anyway, it seems the Defence Secretary was dining last night in the Soho and left his red box under the table. Can't find it anywhere this morning. Should we... Um... Well, I <laughs> think number two would be the worst option. We could go for it if we were playing as a cynical character. Mm. But I, I think number one mm. might be your best bet. Mm. Okay. Very well. I'll see what I can do. Okay, that was short and sweet. Uh, I doubt that did any... Oh, dear. Oh, my. Oh, well. So I wonder, are the events in this game randomly generated? No, it seems like things happen in the same order always. It seems like it could be randomly generated. Mm. Well, at least... Well, at least this first day isn't in my experience, but yeah. let's just... Have that... The... G... G-E-V-D I'm meeting with the chairman and... Oops, sorry. And time is passing rapidly enough that we might just well as well wait this out. Nice view of the Houses of Parliament out the window, I must say. Yes. Uh, did anything ever happen in the series in an actual, you know, parliament session? Not that I recall. Well. Um, in Yes Minister, it was mostly set in offices. Probably the office that we are in, in-game. Mm -hmm. But I don't recall any of it. No, I think, I think there was a quote from the creator of Yes, Minister, that doesn't happen in, you know, in the Parliament sessions, because that's not where policies are really made. <laughs> well, one of the things with the show is that it mentions, for example, there's unrest in the Middle East, and something big is coming up in Africa, and this, that, and the other. Hmm. And a lot of it is as relevant now as it was then. Hmm. And that's one reason why I think the show still stands up. Yeah. There, wasn't there an early episode where it, there was some African leader and, and it turns, turned out that Hacker had uh, gone to uh, the same were, university as him or something? Yes, they were at <laughs> school or university together, yes. Yeah. Oh. oh, intercom. Um, all a bit embarrassing, this Prime Minister, but there's been, um... Get on with it, Bernard. A report from the Daily Journal, uh, pestering number 10 all morning. It says there's a rumour that you've been keeping a weekend mistress at Chequers. He wants a reaction. What shall I do about it? Mm, number 10, would that be, what, is it number 10 Downing Street? Yes. 
the, the like residence it. of the Prime Minister. Yeah. Hmm. So if we deny it, that might sound like, you know, you thou doth protest too much yes. response. But if we just ignore it, it's like it's not worth even a but even you know a comment. It's one of those when did you stop beating your wife questions. Mm. Oh, I support ignoring it. We can go with ignoring it. <coughs> mm. Very well, Prime Minister. I'll put him off. Right. So now it's time for whoop. Is it the thing? The party headquarters. Yes, the party chairman's office. Right, straight down to the matter of the general election, visual and graphical display committee. Oh boy. That would be what your uh, GVGD was. Yes, general election. Hey, so, uh. This is about designing cab election campaign. Things. Oh. Okay. Oh, yes. I think July and October is the desirable answer. Mm. If I remember rightly, generally British elections take place later on in the year. Yeah. So, oh, we could increase levels of official government advertising in other areas. That will go with that one. It seems like a middle of the road answer. Hmm. I see number four. Yes. Okay. Let's do it. <gasps> I quite agree, Jim. Much neglected area of party advantage. It means that. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. I know both sound pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, for not having the official writers on staff, it's been fairly on point thus far. Uh. Hmm. So, I don't know. Which should we pick? Let's go for number one. Yeah, uh, I think so too. I mean, no official government advertising being suspended in the normal area seems like it would be a bit of a downer. Hmm. <laughs> it sounds rather bad, but I'm not sure what the difference would be between government and party funds. Uh, uh, uh. So, we'll not play that one. Uh, we'll, we'll go for number two, oh, I think. Okay. <laughs> Position. Ooh. Good Precisely. choice. Such a neat solution. With all the others, the moment that the party books a slot, they smell a rat. This way, there's no way they can tell. Ooh. Another thing, Jim. The election slogan. Uh, no. Personally, I prefer number three. The others seem like no. The other thought they seem like they could be prefaced with a groan. Yeah, like ah, more of the same thing. Uh, yes. This is all progressive and stuff. So facing the future, just right, meaningless and. Intermediate and unspecific. Oh, before I forget, Jim, the message on the stickers. Uh, and again. I mean, Jim Hacker, uh, man of destiny, a man of the people, those sound like you are. You no, know, uh. What's the, what's the I, word? I don't want to say trying too hard. 
No, that's, that's not what I was thinking, but you are... That's how it brings uh, to my mind. But that, like, you are committing to some specific goal by number three is... Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, nothing of the sort. And number one and two also more of a... They have more uh, ideological connections to things and stuff and... But hacker backer. I like it, I like it. Clever without actually tying us down to a particular tone or point of view. <laughs> hmm. what, what about some other gimmicks, like hacker t-shirts for the youth vote? Hmm. T-shirts for the youth vote has... That... sounds like... I'm it sound, sounds like it might not go anywhere, to be honest. Yeah, I'm trying to think about election campaigns, and I... This... I have never seen anything like this happening any... Uh, don't rem, uh, don't remember seeing anything like this happening at in connection to any election that I've seen. Certainly not in my country. Yeah, so... I suppose America can go all out. So let's say, let's say no. Just say no. <laughs> Not worth it, Jim. If they buy them, it means you've got their votes already. Well, I would have imagined those would have been handed out free of charge. Yeah. Campaigns. Uh, oh. Another suggestion was a party theme tune. Ooh. Party. That when I would say yes. Okay. <laughs> Not bad. Catchy and unaggressive. Radio 2 stuff. Well, I have no idea what Radio 2 stuff means. Maybe you do. Um... I suppose the most unoffensive way I can put it is... It's a BBC radio station. <laughs> and it's... Stuff your dad might listen to. Ah. That sort of genre. <laughs> oh, then hot air balloons. That sounds like a bad idea. And I can, I can see the headlines now. Hacker full Hacker of hot air. Hot air, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Always avoid anything to do with hot air. What about... Hmm... Bus... Train... Helicopter... Hovercraft... I don't know... A hovercraft would be nice... Mm. But I... Practically speaking, a bus. Because <sighs> then it's down to you and your drivers, not the rail network. Yeah, so a helicopter might be seen as rather extrava extravagant. Yes. Now let's go with a bus. Yeah, it's a necessity these days. Oh. Well, that would seem to settle things. Any questions, Jim? Hmm, so, general elections... Hmm... The more trouble than they're worth. Become more American and presidential. A oh, good fun if you have the knack. Uh, I. I think number four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never putting up with hecklers and pushy reporters. We won't be told what's good for them. Anyway, must be off. Yeah, seems like number two would have been the most. Yeah. Uh. Ah, that must be all at the office, and I think that would be about the end of the day. Let's see. Ooh, we went We've back improved! Up. And... Ah, this has been... Ah, this recording has gone on for a bit, but I suppose we can do a one video per day, and let's... Ah! Ooh. Still have this to handle before the end I of the day. I see. <laughs> I'm trying to divine how to pronounce this. 
Prime Minister, it's a Tayo Siege on the phone for you? I think that might be correct. What Tau on Siege? What on earth the Tao Siege? And I actually do know it's the British uh, no the Irish Prime Minister. I checked. I didn't know, but we'll we'll go with you. <laughs> Ooh. Who's saying how clever we are? Uh, inter oh, inter <laughs> internal monologue. <laughs> Oh, top of the day to you, Mr. Hacker. It's Michael uh, Malachi here. I was just wondering if I could send a belated St. Patrick's Day message to all those Irish people living in Britain. Especially those in Northern Ireland, because that's not problematic at all. Belated, all right. St. Patrick's Day was two weeks ago. Anyway... <laughs> mm. Well... Two weeks after St. Patrick's Day, he's probably not calling out for the goodness of his heart. I would say no. <laughs> so, two or three? I would say two, because realistically, th mm. there's got to be something behind this. Ooh. Are you still there, Mr. Hacker? All I wanted to say was that Britain owes as much to Ireland as Ireland does to Britain. <laughs> Some security word. I I think number three uh, because hmm. unionists tend to be an uncooperative lot, at least as the news <laughs> has demonstrated. Ah, okay. Now, personally, number I was thinking of number one, but that probably is obvious. Number one would also work. Um. Well, yeah. Let's. Let's remain non-committal until we <laughs> get some idea what he actually yes. wants. Like Appleby is still in Dublin. Hey, there you go. Appleby is the correct surname. Well done. Ooh. Not that I want to annoy anyone, you understand, Mr. Hacker. I'm sure he doesn't. It's just that... I seem to recall that number two actually is true, but, well... Well, we can mm. go with number two. Yeah. <laughs> and now that I think of it, Mr. Hacker, would you like to pay a visit to Dublin? It would be lovely, Bejabbers. Bejabbers? Bejabbers. I don't even know that one. Me neither, really. Let's see. So number two sounds appropriate already. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Let's go with that. One final question, Mr. Hacker. Would you happen to know who's running in the 230 at Haydock Park? <laughs> <coughs> MI5 secret message, but if it's. But if it's, you know, uh, b going across borders, would, wouldn't that make it MI6? Also, wouldn't we be in on it if we're part of the code? <laughs> ah. Quite oh, possibly. Let's. Let's let's be non-committal. Uh. Well, thanks for your trouble, Mr. Hacker. Cheerio now. Cheerio. And can we now finally end today? I have to say, that was a rather bizarre exchange. Ah. It's another one of those ones where there doesn't seem to be any right answer to most of it. Ooh. Let's check the poll numbers. And it went down 1%. Only 1% if you can look at it that way. Yes. 
Okay, so, ooh. And. Ah. Uh, let's hope so as well. Yeah. Hopefully we can we can do better than negative three percent. Negative four. Yes, we went down again. Mm. Well, I believe that's all for today. So, and we shall return for turn for another day of British politics. Are you yes. not excited? Yes, Prime Minister. <laughs>